This screencast is one in a series on reactor calculations, and the title is Non-Ideal Reactors. The content is Ideal and Non-Ideal Reactors, a model comparison, the residence time distribution, some general methods to characterize non-ideal reactors, and finally, some models to characterize non-ideal reactors. Ideal reactor behavior means that the mixing is either perfect in all directions, such as is the case with the CSTR. The other extreme is that there is no mixing at all in the actual direction, such as with the PFR. On the other hand, the PFR is perfectly mixed in the two other directions, perpendicular to the flow direction. There are at least two effects of the different mixing regimes. One is that the reactors exhibit very different efficiency in terms of reactor conversion. Another effect is that the various reactors exhibit different residence time distributions for the fluid elements that enter the reactor. Let's just take an illustrative example. Consider a first order reaction, A is transferred to B, with the rate equation Ri, Ra equals minus K times Ca. And with the data, K equals 0.5, theta equals 4, and the input concentration to the reactor is 3. For the CSTR, we then get a conversion of k theta divided by 1 plus k theta. And with the numbers inserted, that is 0.67, which means that 67% of the input reactant A is converted in the reactor. The corresponding number for the PFR is x equals 1 minus e to negative k times theta. And with numbers, the conversion in the PFR is 0.86. That means that the conversion in the PFR is much, much higher than in the CSTR reactor. And that is due to the different mixing regimes. Let's divide the big CSTR with a resonance time of 4 into two smaller CSTRs in series, each with theta equals 4 divided by 2 equals 2. So the total volume of the system is constant. We then get two equations one for CSTR1 and one for CSTR2. The output concentration from the first reactor is the input concentration divided by 1 plus k theta 1. The second reactor has the output from reactor 1 as input, and the output concentration from the second reactor is C1A divided by 1 plus k theta. If we combine these two equations, we get an expression for the output concentration from the two reactors in series. So C2A equals the input concentration of A times the two parentheses shown here. We can now express the conversion as 1 minus the output concentration divided by the input concentration, which equals 1 minus the product of the two parentheses. And with numbers, x equals 0.75. So if we go back to the ideal reactors, we see that the CSTR got a conversion of 67%, we had a conversion of 75% in the tanks in series, and we had a conversion of 0.86 for the plug flow reactor. There are differences between the reactors, and they can be attributed to the differences in the residence time distributions caused by the different mixing efficiencies. The residence time distribution is a very useful concept. We should bear in mind that volume elements that enter a reactor may stay for a different period of time in that reactor and the different volume elements have different reactions time in the reactor, and they have a distribution of resonance times, and therefore also a distribution of reaction times. The PFR is a unique case, because all the input elements to the reactor stay exactly theta in the reactor. And if we know the residence time distribution, we can calculate the mean residence time, we can predict the conversion of a reactor. There are four steps to determine E of T and EOT is the resonance time distribution. The first thing one can do is to add a pulse of tracer to a reactor. And the next thing is to measure the concentration of that tracer in the output from the reactor. The next thing to do is to determine the fraction of tracer that leaves the reactor at a certain time t. And that is, if we look at the left-hand side of this equation, and the numerator is q times ct. That is, the amount that leaves at a certain instant. The denominator, the integral from t equals 0 to t equals infinity of q times dt, is the total amount that leaves the reactor between time 0 and time infinity. And that is, of course, all the tracer that was in the reactor from the beginning. If q is constant, we get 
c of t divided by the integral from 0 to infinity c of t dt. And this is the residence time distribution. The residence time distribution is in fact a normalized concentration curve. And since all elements have a residence time, and all elements leave the reactor by the time infinity, the integral of the residence time distribution from times equals zero to time equals infinity dt equals one. That means that all tracer that is in the reactor from the beginning must have left the reactor by time infinity. We can also calculate the concentration in the output and the residence time distribution for an ideal CSTR to which we add a tracer. And the mass balance is then that the input is zero because the tracer is already in the reactor at time equals zero. The production is zero because it's a tracer. But in the output we have a flow out and that is Q times C and we have an accumulation term that is a change in concentration in the volume which is the volume dc dt. If the initial concentration of tracer in the CSTR is C0 then we see that after separation of variables, at time equals zero, the concentration is C zero. At time equals T, the concentration is C. And we get that the integral of DC equals the integral of DT divided by theta. And the solution is that this C, that is the concentration of tracer in the output, equals initial concentration times E to a negative T divided by theta. We now go back to the definition of residence time distribution and that is the concentration in the output divided by the integral of the concentration in the output from zero to infinity. We insert the results we just got and see that ET can be expressed as E to negative T divided by theta divided by the integral. If these are evaluated we get E of T equals E to negative T divided by theta over theta. That means that the tracer is washed out from the CSTR according to an exponential path. If we integrate E of t between 0 and theta, we get the fraction that has left the CSTR after time equals theta. So integral of the resonance time distribution from 0 to theta equals 1 minus E to minus 1, since t divided by theta equals 1. And we get the number 0.633, which means that 63.3% of all the tracer that was added at time zero has left the reactor after one residence time. It's now time to make some remarks. The mean residence time does not imply that 50% of the volume elements that enter the CSTR stays exactly t equals theta. On the contrary, 63% of all the volume elements that enter the CSTR stays shorter and reacts shorter than t equals theta. That means that many of the elements that enter the reactor leave the reactor with a low conversion rate. 37% of the elements stay longer and react longer than t equals theta. That means that few elements leave the reactor with a high conversion rate. And this is why the CSTR is less efficient than the PFR, where all the elements stay and react exactly during theta in the reactor. Now it's time to show how we can calculate the mean residence time from the residence time distribution. And the residence time is the integral from t equals zero to infinity of various times times the corresponding residence time distribution dt. That means that the mean residence time is a weighted average of all the times that different volume elements stay in the reactor. We will base this example on a tracer experiment and you have the data to the right. Here we have a tracer concentration measured in the output of a reactor from time equals zero when the tracer was added to time equals 400 when all the tracer had left the reactor. The first thing is to evaluate the integral of the concentration from time equals zero to time equals infinity. And we can approximate this as the sum of all the measure values times delta t, that is the time that elapsed between each measuring point. And in this case, measurements were made every tenth seconds. So delta t equals 10. The next step is to calculate E of t. And the fourth step is to evaluate theta which can be approximated as the sum of all times times the corresponding residence time distribution value times delta t. 
This will be clearer if I show the example in Excel. Here I have the data in an Excel sheet. On the left, we have the various times when the measurements were made from 0 to 400 seconds. In the second column, I have the values of the concentrations as measured in the reactor output. We now start to evaluate the integral. So we define that what we should start to do is to create the sum. So we take the COT value times 10, which is delta T. And we do this for all the measuring points. Then it's just time to make the sum, and the value becomes 59.59, 0. And we can see that this is C of T times delta T. The next thing to do is to create the E of T. And then we take C of T divided by this integral. And that is the C of T value divided by 59, 59, 0. And we do this for all the various times. And now we take T times E of T times delta T and get first times the E of T times 10. We get all the values and then we add them up and we get 119.4. Now this is the mean residence time. This is a very crude integration method but I can assure you that the integration error is no larger than 1%. And if we look at the graph this seems reasonable, considering the data. Now we should go back to our model comparison that show that the tanks in series reactor falls in between the CSTR and PFR. But the question is, how many CSTRs in series do you need in order to approximate a PFR? And we do this because the CSTR in series model is a very versatile method to describe non-ideal reactors. We learned earlier that when we have two CSTRs in series, and with the numbers we had, we got the conversion rate of 0.75. We can find the reason to the right. The residence time distribution for the PFR is simply one value, and for the CSTR is an exponential decay. However, the tanks in series model with two CSTRs in series falls somewhere in between. If we divide the volume into 10 CSTRs, we get a conversion rate of 0.84. And we can find the reason to the right. The residence time distribution for a system with 10 CSTRs in series is very much more similar to PFR than to a CSTR. We have two more models to describe non-ideal reactors. One is a segregation model and the other one is the dispersion model. The segregation model is based on that each volume element is seen as a small batch reactor that stays a certain time in the reactor. And then we just weight together the various elements with E of T the third model is a dispersion model, and in the dispersion model we describe mixing as a diffusion process, but this is covered in later chapters. The content of this lecture was ideal and non-ideal reactors, a model comparison, the residence time distribution, some methods to characterize reactors, including one example performed in Excel,